Hello, and welcome to the Food Business Allergen Awareness Training, which has been developed in collaboration with Trading Standards and Environmental Health Officers from the Greater Gwent Food Group. The aim of today is to inform you about food hypersensitivity and the legal requirements you must comply with when providing allergen information to consumers. This training consists of a presentation and some videos. Some of the videos relate to real-life stories, and some viewers may find some of the content upsetting. This training will ensure you know who enforces food law and where you can get further business advice, support and resources. You will know what food hypersensitivities are and the reactions people can have to them. You will gain an insight as to what it is like to live with a food allergy. You will know the 14 allergens required to be declared by law and understand food allergen information legal requirements. You will be introduced to pre-packed for direct sale food labelling rules, which apply to Wales, England, Northern Ireland and Scotland from the 1st of October 2021. You will understand the importance of effective allergen management controls and you will understand the potential consequences when things go wrong. Food law enforcement is carried out by local authority environmental health and trading standards departments. They make sure our food is safe to eat and that hygiene and food standards are upheld. Why do we have food law? We all have a right to know where our food comes from. Food law sets out rules covering the safety, standards, quality, composition, labelling, presentation and advertising of food and materials in contact with food. This is so our food is safe and it is what it says it is. There are different types of food hypersensitivity. Food allergy, food intolerance and celiac disease are three examples that you may have heard of. A food allergy is when your immune system, which helps your body fight infections, mistakes the proteins in food as a threat. When someone who has a food allergy eats something they are allergic to, an allergen, it causes an immune system reaction. An allergen is any substance, most often eaten or inhaled, that is recognized as a threat by the immune system and causes an allergic reaction. People with a food allergy can react differently when they are exposed to allergens. The type and severity of the reaction depends on a number of factors, including the individual, the severity of their allergy, the amount of allergen they've been exposed to, and other factors such as exercise, lack of sleep or medication, which can increase an individual's sensitivity. Often, allergic reactions are mild, but they can be severe and can result in anaphylaxis. This is a medical emergency and requires immediate treatment. Anaphylaxis is the most severe form of an allergic reaction and is life-threatening and can result in death. Some customers may have a food intolerance or celiac disease. Food intolerance is not the same as a food allergy. Most do not involve the immune system and are generally not life-threatening. Intolerance is a difficulty digesting certain foods and having an unpleasant physical reaction to them. Symptoms usually occur several hours after eating the offending food. Typical symptoms tend to be diarrhea, stomach cramps, skin rashes or itching. A food intolerance can make someone feel very ill or affect their long-term health. Celiac disease is an autoimmune condition caused by a reaction to gluten, a dietary protein found in cereals such as wheat, barley and rye. The body's immune system attacks the small intestines and reduces its ability to absorb nutrients from food. Unmanaged, it can cause long-term health problems such as malnutrition, bowel cancer and osteoporosis. Treatment is a lifelong gluten-free diet. Customers with food intolerance and celiac disease should be treated with the same caution as someone who has a food allergy. Here are some allergy facts. Did you know there is no cure for food allergies? The only treatment for people living with a food allergy is to strictly avoid the food containing the allergen that triggers an allergic reaction. Unlike bacteria, cooking with high heat and using different food processing methods doesn't destroy allergens and doesn't ensure safety for people with food allergies. In some cases, cooking actually increases their potency, for example, roasting peanuts. 
Whilst rare, allergic reactions can be airborne. Most airborne reactions probably occur due to particles of protein that rise into the air when food is actively cooked and then they're inhaled. An allergic reaction can be produced by a tiny amount of a food ingredient that a person is sensitive to, for example, a drop of milk, a fragment of a peanut, or just one or two sesame seeds. For those at greatest risk, the tiniest trace of food allergen can trigger severe symptoms and in some cases prove fatal. Peanut allergy is one of the most common food allergies. Even though peanut has the word nut in the name, it's not actually a nut. Peanuts grow in pods that mature underground and are classified as legume, like beans, lentils and peas. The proteins in peanuts are similar in structure to tree nuts. For example, but not exclusively, walnuts, cashews, almonds and pecans. For this reason, people who are allergic to peanuts can also be allergic to tree nuts. Peanuts, tree nuts, fish and shellfish allergies are the most common in adults and they can develop at any point in life with no previous symptoms experienced. Egg, milk, soya, wheat and peanuts are foods that most commonly cause a reaction in children. Here are some allergy figures. Did you know it is estimated 1 to 2% of the UK adult population and 5 to 8% of children have a food allergy? One in 100 people have celiac disease. Tragically, about 10 people die per year in the UK from food-induced anaphylaxis. Most at risk are teenagers and those in their early 20s who are starting to make independent food choices. These young people can experience peer pressure or may be too embarrassed to talk publicly about having a food allergy or intolerance, especially when in a social setting. Struggling with social acceptance and understanding, they are more likely to take risks. An online study conducted in 2018 by the Food Standards Agency in partnership with Allergy UK and the Anaphylaxis Campaign revealed that 41% of 16 to 24 year olds with food allergies or intolerances don't feel confident at all or only feel a little confident to ask serving staff for allergen information. The research also exposed that 60% avoided dining out in the previous six months due to their condition. The Food Standards Agency have launched the hashtag Speak Up for Allergies campaign, which aims to encourage young people to ask for allergy information. The aim of the campaign is to emphasize the importance of speaking about food allergies every time when ordering food as the recipe, ingredients, chef or kitchen staff may have changed. Allergic reactions can be mild, moderate, or severe. Depending on the type of food allergy, symptoms can occur a few seconds or minutes after eating. Some can develop symptoms several hours later. Symptoms can affect different areas of the body at the same time and don't have to appear in any particular order. The most common allergic symptoms include tingling or itching in the mouth, hives, a raised itchy red rash, in some cases, the skin can turn red and itchy, but without the raised rash. Swelling of the face, mouth, throat or other areas of the body. Difficulty swallowing. Wheezing or shortness of breath. Feeling dizzy and lightheaded. Feeling sick or nausea, vomiting. A severe allergic reaction, anaphylaxis, can be sudden and get worse very quickly. Symptoms include generalized flushing of the skin, hives or nettle rash anywhere on the body, a sense of impending doom, swelling of the throat and mouth, difficulty in swallowing or speaking, alterations in heart rate, severe asthma, abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, sudden feeling of weakness or drop in blood pressure, collapse and unconsciousness. A patient would not necessarily experience all of these symptoms in the same episode. Without quick treatment, it can be life-threatening. If you think you or someone is experiencing anaphylaxis, dial 999 and ask for an ambulance as soon as possible. Why is food information so important? For those at greatest risk, the tiniest trace of food allergen can trigger severe symptoms and in some cases cause near-fatal symptoms or even worse, prove fatal. 
all of the young people you see on this slide sadly died as a result of anaphylaxis. 15-year-old Megan Lee and her friend ordered a takeaway meal online on the 30th of December 2016. Despite including her allergies on an online form, Megan was sent a meal containing peanut protein. She suffered an acute asthma attack after eating the food. Megan suffered irreversible brain damage and her life support was withdrawn two days later on the 1st of January 2017. The post-mortem concluded that the cause of death was a fatal asthma attack precipitated by an allergic reaction to nuts. The Lancashire business had no systems or processes to manage allergen control. The menu contained no information about allergens. No record was kept of the ingredients used in dishes. Gross negligence manslaughter, food law and health and safety charges were brought in the case against the food business jointly investigated by the police, Lancashire Trading Standards and Hindburn Borough Council Environmental Health following Megan's death. In the trial, the judge commented, you must now live with the guilt of what you have done and the suffering you have caused Megan's family and to your own families. All of this is a tragedy that could so easily have been avoided had you exercised the proper care to be expected of those who serve food to the public. In July 2016, shortly before boarding a plane to Nice, 15-year-old Natasha Ednan Laparus ate a baguette that she purchased at a shop at Heathrow Airport. Unbeknown to Natasha, the bread contained sesame, which she was allergic to. The presence of sesame was not listed on the product. During the flight, Natasha started to complain of having an itchy throat before hives started to break out. Sadly, despite administering two EpiPen doses of adrenaline, her father's efforts to save his daughter were not enough. The last words Natasha said to him as he fought to save her were, Daddy, help me. I can't breathe. When Natasha bought the baguette, there was no specific allergen information on the baguette or on the food display cabinet. The food business chose to deliver allergen information orally, which was in compliance with the legal requirements. The coroner concluded that the teenager had been reassured by the lack of specific allergen information on the packaging. Following the inquest, the business brought in full labelling on their freshly made products and the government undertook a review of the rules for food pre-packed for direct sale. Following the review, new labelling requirements were introduced for pre-packed for direct sale food. They came into a force on the 1st of October 2021. This subject will be covered in much detail later. Owen Carey had unstable asthma and multiple food allergies, including milk and wheat. Owen ordered grilled chicken from a burger restaurant in the O2 Arena in London while celebrating his 18th birthday with his girlfriend. It was described on the menu as classic chicken, grilled chicken breast, shredded iceberg, tomato, red onion, pickles, Byron sauce. He told the member of staff, who served his table about his allergies and that he was allergic to dairy and wheat. They failed to tell him the chicken he ordered had been marinated in buttermilk. Owen ate half of his chicken before he felt his lips tingling and experienced stomach problems. He collapsed in front of the London Eye and despite assistance from members of the public, including an RAF doctor and paramedics that attended the scene, he sadly died. The inquest concluded Owen died from a severe food-induced anaphylactic reaction from the food he had eaten at the restaurant despite making staff aware of his allergies. The menu was reassuring in that it made no reference to any marinade or potential allergenic ingredient in the food selected and he was not informed that there were allergens in the order. Speaking outside the coroner's court, Owen's sister said her brother's death should not have happened. The current policy left too much room for error. She said hundreds of thousands of allergy sufferers were scared to eat out in restaurants because that was the key place where they are at risk. The food chain has since made changes. Servers can only send orders to the kitchen once they have confirmed they have asked the customer about allergies. The menu at the restaurant now has an allergy message covering just under a third of a page. Megan and Owen told the food businesses about their allergies. Sadly, neither were told of the allergens in their meals.
In Natasha's case, allergy information wasn't provided on a label or on the display cabinet. It was only available verbally at the customer's request. We started this slide with a question. Why is food information so important? Accurate food allergen information is vital to customers with an allergy or intolerance to enable them to make safe food choices. Please always ask customers if they have an allergy or intolerance. Not only could it prevent someone from being ill, but it could save their life. There is no single cause for the increase in the number of people suffering from allergies. Research suggests there are a number of possible factors. The following have been considered. Genetics, passed from parents to children. Eating habits. Early exposure to allergens. Modern medicines, for example, antibiotics. Vitamin D deficiency and other dietary factors. What is it actually like to live with a food allergy? Let me introduce you to Chloe Fitzpatrick, who is an inspirational, determined and positive-minded young lady who does not allow her severe allergy to control her life. A Day in the Life of Chloe is a short film which stars Chloe Fitzpatrick. It will give you an insight as to what life is like for Chloe living with a food allergy and the impact this has on her family. The film is based on a play written and directed by Chloe's sister Sophie. It's produced by Lancashire County Council and was developed to increase awareness of food allergies as a serious and growing health issue and help educate young people about the potentially life-threatening nature of the condition. My name's Chloe, and to most people, I come across as an average teenager. My older sister Sophie. Some might say she's overprotective, but she's just looking out for me. Ah, no way. Okay. And that's me lying on the ground in the middle of the street. It could have been anything that caused it. The mug, or the hug, or the table I sat at, or the air I've breathed. You see, I'm allergic to strawberries. Even the slightest hint of strawberry could be fatal. Unfortunately, this is what I have to live with, day in, day out. Imagine being killed by a strawberry. The Allergy UK website describes symptoms of anaphylaxis as swelling of tongue and or throat, difficulty in swallowing or speaking, Vocal changes, like a hoarse voice. Wheezing, or a persistent cough, or severe asthma. Difficult or noisy breathing. Stomach cramps, or vomiting. Dizziness, collapse, or loss of consciousness. This is due to a drop in blood pressure and exhibits itself as floppiness in babies. We're now going to show you how to use an auto-injector, or EpiPen, which is the brand name. Step 
help one. Stay calm, keep talking to them. Step two, remove the blue cap. Step three, hold 10 centimeters away from the thigh and jab firmly. Step four, hold EpiPen in place. Step five, remove the EpiPen and massage the injection site. Step six, call 999 and ask for an ambulance. State you have a patient suffering from anaphylaxis. about Chloe's reaction. Chloe has to go to the hospital after a reaction. She has a cocktail of 17 steroids. Chloe always has to be placed on a heart monitor. It takes two weeks for Chloe's body to recover after the reaction. She has to take time off college, which adds to the stress. And it could happen anywhere, even just going shopping or eating at a restaurant Oh, it's here. Brilliant. Oh, is that strawberry? Oh, no, it's just raspberry. Oh, no, no she means the, uh, the sauce. Do you know what the sauce is? Oh, I'm not sure, sorry. Oh, just with it. Tell staff in restaurants about allergies. Don't be afraid to tell people about your allergy, especially when eating out. If in doubt, it's better not to eat it. Keeping food safe. Use completely separate, dedicated equipment for allergy-free cooking. Cleaning down surfaces thoroughly with a fresh, clean cloth, soap and hot water. Even better would be to use a completely separate area to cook allergy-free food in it. Keeping allergens stored safely in lidded labelled containers on the bottom shelf to minimise contamination through spillages. It's always quite difficult travelling, so we always make it our priority to find a member of staff and explain the severity of our allergy, because we don't know what products they're going to be selling or what other passengers are going to bring on board. Um, so in this instance, we you know, invited the uh, hostess over, explained the situation and kindly asked if she could make an announcement to the other passengers. She then stopped me and said, I know how to do my job. So, okay, that was fine. So we had a bit of a giggle because she was rather rude. So then her voice came over the tunnel. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This evening we have a passenger on board who has a severe allergy reaction. Please state your name and your People actually started to laugh and say, oh, the allergy must be a bit of a joke. So I then took it upon myself to go and tell her exactly how we felt about the situation. The train story was that a group of us were going down to London with school and there was a passenger and they had strawberries and the teacher was really dramatic. Strawberries! Everyone get down, hit the floor, everyone get down! So everyone on this train was like, what's going on? And the teacher was pushing people out the way and being really dramatic and we couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> but anyway, after everything had happened, it meant that we got into first class on the train, which was good. I worry about my allergy when I go out drinking. All right, well. Get off. about having to tell new friends about my allergy. I worry about what people might say about me. I worry about forgetting my EpiPen. I worry about being alone and having a reaction. 
it can make me feel quite isolated sometimes because you've, it's always on your mind wherever you go, you've got to tell people or you've got to be aware of what's around you. And it can make you feel quite different because most people don't have to think about that, but you do. I know that our other sister Lucy, we've discussed it in the past and you know, whenever we get a couple of missed calls off our mum, our immediate response is, it must be Chloe. And you know, we dread the day that we get a phone call saying that we're no longer three, there's only two of us. You know, the, the danger is always, always there. And it, it fills me with dread because I love her so much. There are 14 food allergens recognised in law. These are celery, cereals containing gluten, crustaceans, eggs, fish, lupin, milk, mollusks, mustard, nuts, peanuts, sesame seeds, soya, and sulfur dioxide, which is sometimes known as sulfites. There are other foods that cause allergic reactions too, like strawberries, kiwi, mushrooms, and many other things. Some allergens may be hidden, for example, strawberries may be hidden in ingredients like fruit juice or fruit sugars. Check food labels. The recognised allergens will be highlighted. Also look for may contain warnings. Allergic reactions can be mild, moderate or severe. In some cases, they can be life-threatening. This is known as anaphylaxis. Over 20,000 people are admitted to hospital each year with an allergy. Six to eight percent of children have a proven food allergy. The most common allergies are pollen, milk, wheat, gluten, nuts, fruit and eggs. People with allergies show signs of their reaction within a few minutes to two hours after eating. Some people are more likely to develop an allergy because it runs in their family. Boys are more likely to develop an inherited allergy than girls. As a mum, from the minute your child is placed in your arms, you worry. Every parent worries, I know. Caring for a child with a life-threatening condition can be difficult. Some days are easier than others. Some days are not so easy. Anxiety is something I have learned to live with. I try to deal with every reaction as it happens. I try not to think, what about the next one? Every parent's worst nightmare is that they may lose their child. My job is to keep Chloe safe. The only place I can 100% guarantee that Chloe is safe is our home. Every time Chloe leaves the house, I make an informed choice to enable her to live as normal a life as possible. My hope for Chloe is that she still may outgrow her anaphylaxis. This is looking less and less likely, but I still have hope. My dream for Chloe is that she lives a happy, fulfilling life, that all her dreams come true. My wish for Chloe is that she remains safe and well, that people continue to understand and support her condition throughout her life.
So what does the law say? It says, food businesses must ensure the food they produce or prepare is safe. There are different allergen information requirements depending on how food is presented to the consumer. More details will be provided on these later. If a customer is told that food is free from their stated allergen, and it is not, they have been supplied misdescribed and unsafe food. Food must also be accurately described and food descriptions must not be false or misleading. To help consumers make safe and informed choices, any information given to them about the presence of allergenic ingredients in food must be accurate. An employer has a duty to protect the health, safety and welfare of their employees and other people who might be affected by their business. Employers must do whatever is reasonably practicable to achieve this. In the event of a fatality, it is also possible for the police to bring gross negligence manslaughter charges. Gross negligence manslaughter can occur when someone is killed by someone else's extreme carelessness, even if there was no intention to kill or harm that person. The person who caused the harm may be considered grossly negligent as a result of his actions or a failure to act when he should have. Failure to comply with any of the above are criminal offences and could have serious consequences. Don't forget, if you tell a customer that food is free from their stated allergen and it is not, you have misdescribed and sold unsafe food. This applies whether the allergen is one of the 14 allergens required to be declared by law or not. The law requires food business operators to inform consumers if any of the 14 allergens required to be declared by law or products thereof are present in the food or drink they sell. This also applies to additives, processing aids and any other substances which are present in the final product. The 14 allergens are cereals containing gluten such as barley and oats, crustaceans such as prawn, crabs and lobsters, eggs, celery, milk, fish, tree nuts, such as almonds, hazelnuts, walnuts, brazil nuts, cashews, pecans, pistachios, and macadamia nuts, sulfur dioxide or sulfites, soya, sesame, such as sesame seeds and sesame oil, peanuts, mustard, lupin, and mollusks, such as mussels and oysters. There are different legal requirements on how to provide allergen information depending on whether the food is pre-packed, pre-packed for direct sale, or non-pre-packed. So what are the labelling requirements for pre-packed food? Examples of pre-packed food include a tin of soup, a jar of mayonnaise, a packet of noodles, and canned soft drinks typically sold in a supermarket. Pre-packed products refer to any food put into packaging before being placed on sale. Food is pre-packed when it is either fully or partly enclosed by the packaging, cannot be altered without opening or changing the packaging, is ready for sale. Pre-packed food must have full labelling, including the name of the food and a full ingredients list. Allergens present in the product must be emphasised each time they appear in the ingredients list. For example, by using a bold, italic or coloured type to make the allergen ingredients easier to spot. Businesses selling pre-packed foods through distance selling, for example, food that is ordered online, by mail or by telephone, and then delivered to the consumer, need to ensure that mandatory allergen information is available to the consumer before they purchase the product and also at the time of delivery. This information could be included on a website or in a catalogue. Pre-packed for direct sale food is food which is packaged at the same place it is offered or sold to consumers and is in this packaging before it is ordered or selected. It can include food that consumers select themselves, for example from a display unit, as well as products kept behind a counter and some food sold at mobile or temporary outlets. Examples of pre-packed for direct sale foods include sandwiches and bakery products which are packed on site before a consumer selects or orders them. Products which are pre-packaged on site, ready for sale, such as pizzas, rotisserie chicken, salads, and pasta pots. Foods packaged and then sold elsewhere by the same operator at a market stall or mobile site. 
Why do we have food labeling requirements for pre-packed for direct sale food? As you've heard, Natasha Ednan Laparus was allergic to sesame. She suffered a fatal allergic reaction after purchasing and eating a baguette that did not have labeling indicating the presence of sesame. At that time, the law provided alternatives to food businesses on how to give allergen information for pre-packed for direct sale food. For example, a food business could choose for this information to be provided in written format on a label, menu, ticket, or they could provide the information orally to consumers. Following her tragic death, Natasha's parents campaigned for increased transparency around UK food labelling requirements for pre-packed for direct sale food. As a result of continuing fatalities, governments across the UK agreed it was necessary to review the legal framework regarding allergen information requirements for food sold this way. The change in law, which came into force on the 1st of October 2021, increased food labelling requirements for pre-packed for direct sale food. Its aim is to protect consumers living with food allergies and give them confidence in the food they buy. Pre-packed for direct sale food labelling rules. So what do they mean for food businesses? Food sold, which is pre-packed for direct sale, must have the name of the food and a list of ingredients directly attached on the package or on a label attached to the package. If the food contains any of the 14 allergens required to be listed by law, they must be emphasized within the ingredients list. For example, in bold, capital letters, contrasting colors, or underlined every time they appear in the ingredients list. Further information is available on the Food Standards Agency's dedicated webpage to allergen labeling changes for pre-packed for direct sale. Here, you will also find the link to the document Food Allergen Labeling and Information Requirements Technical Guidance. What food requires pre-packed for direct sale labeling? If the answer is yes to all of the following three questions, food requires pre-packed for direct sale labeling. Question one, is the food presented to a consumer in packaging? For food to be considered packaged, it must be fully or partly enclosed by packaging and cannot be altered without opening or changing the packaging in some way and be ready for sale to the consumer. Question two, is it packaged before the consumer selects or orders it? Question three, is it packaged at the same place it's sold? Packaged at the same place includes food packaged by the same food business and sold at a temporary or mobile site, such as a food truck or market store. Food packaged and offered at different units by the same business in one building complex, such as an airport or shopping center. pre for direct sale rules do not apply to food sold at a distance, for example, over the phone or the internet. Businesses selling food this way need to ensure mandatory allergen information is available to the consumer before they purchase the food and also at the time of delivery. An easy-to-use pre-pack for direct sale labeling decision tool is available on the Food Standards Agency website. To comply with the law, food businesses that sell pre-pack for direct sale food should review and assess food products on a case-by-case -case basis to decide whether they are pre-packed for direct sale, refer to the Food Standards Agency pre-packed for direct sale online resources, they will help you. If still unsure, seek advice from your local authority, trading standards or environmental health departments. Identify any allergens, including any risks of cross-contamination. Accurately and clearly label all pre-packed for direct sale food on the package or on a label attached to the package with the name of the food and an ingredients list emphasizing any allergenic ingredients. Review and update any internal procedures, training handbooks on how to label pre-packed for direct sale and manage potential risks from allergenic foods. This may include a review of your hazard analysis and critical control point plan or HACCP or Safer Food Better Business as appropriate. Train staff on the new allergen information rules. Monitor your staff and processes. Take corrective action where necessary. You can access further training on allergen management, including pre-packed for direct sale, by logging onto the Allergen e-learning resource on the Food Standards Agency's website. A common reason food business operators give for not having allergen controls in place is that they don't have enough time. Allergen management is critical and is everybody's business. If you wish to provide allergen-free food to consumers, 
allergens must be considered as part of your HACCP or food safety management system. For those that use Safer Food Better Business, please refer to it, complete and or review all the sections relevant to managing food allergens, the safe method sheets and staff training. The Safer Food Better Business resource is available to download from the Food Standards Agency website. Working through Safer Food Better Business will help you to identify and assess your allergen risks. By doing so, it may help you comply with the law and make sure the food and drink you supply is safe. When considering business procedures, decide who has overall allergen management responsibility. For example, this may be the manager or chef. A responsible member of staff should be available on each shift to manage requests from customers with allergies. If a customer tells you they have a food allergy, you may wish to consider letting them speak directly to the responsible person. Staff allergen training is crucial. Make sure your staff are provided with suitable information, instruction, and are properly supervised. Staff training needs will be unique to your business, and any training needs should be determined having regard to the food safety management system. Decide how your business will comply with the food labeling and food information legal requirements to provide consumers with clear, accurate information about the allergens that may be in your food so they can make an informed decision. Put in place an emergency action plan and make sure staff know what to do in the unfortunate event that a customer suffers an allergic reaction. Determine the allergens present in all food dishes and drinks. You can do this by checking ingredient labeling information. On pre-packed food labels, you will find allergens emphasized every time they appear in the ingredients list. For non-pre-packed food, for example, unpackaged bread, cakes, pies, etc., obtain written allergen information from your suppliers. If a supplier contract is in place, include a clause requiring notification of any ingredient changes or supply of product substitutes. Keep a record of any supplier contact. It is also important to consider any allergen advisory warnings on your ingredient labeling, for example, may contain certain food allergens or are not suitable for people with food allergies. If so, a customer will need to know this information to decide if the food is safe for them to eat. Don't forget to consider ingredients in side dishes, accompaniments, any daily or weekly specials, as well as garnishes, glazes, sauces, stocks, condiments, cooking and drizzle oils. Sometimes there will be a problem with the food product that means it should not be sold. It might be withdrawn, taken off the shelves or recalled when customers are asked to return the product. This can happen if there is a risk to consumers because the allergy information or label is missing or incorrect. When this happens, the Food Standards Agency will issue an allergy alert. You can stay up to date with food and allergy alerts by subscribing free of charge on their website. Keep a written record of the allergenic ingredients in your dishes and drinks. It is advisable to retain original up-to-date food labels and date them as they are filed. There are some useful tools and templates on the Food Standards Agency website which may help you record allergenic ingredients in your dishes. A dishes and their allergen content menu chart can be used to record allergens. If you choose to use this method, make sure you accurately transfer all ingredient allergen information to the chart by ticking the box under the relevant allergen heading. Because the smallest trace of an allergen could cause a fatal reaction, it is important to also include may contain allergens. Staff could use this chart to provide the allergen information to consumers. An allergen chef recipe card can be used for one-off dishes, such as specials, when ingredients run out to share information between shifts. If you are comfortable using technology, MenuCal is a free online tool available through the Food Standards Agency Northern Ireland website. It helps businesses to develop menus, keep recipes online, and flag allergens as well as undertake additional training. Regularly review your allergen records, especially if you have new dishes, new ingredients, new suppliers, product substitutes, a menu change, new equipment, move to new facilities, or have staff changes. Revise and update them as necessary. Cross-contamination risk assessment. Depending on the sensitivity of the person consuming the food, it can take only a trace of an allergen to cause a fatal allergic reaction. 
These cases are rare, but they do happen. The culprit can be poor allergen management procedures and or lack of cross-contamination control in the kitchen, which results with an allergen being accidentally introduced into a dish. Cross-contamination incidents can be managed by implementing strict policies and procedures and by making sure that everyone is fully aware of them. Allergen cross-contamination can happen as a result of food-to-equipment contact. For example, traces of allergens can remain on dishes, utensils, work surfaces that are not properly cleaned before preparing food. Food-to-food -food contact, for example, oil that has been previously used to cook food, could transfer allergens to the next batch of food cooked in the oil. Food-to-hand contact, for example, traces of allergens could be transferred from staff during food preparation if hands are not washed effectively. When assessing the risk, you will need to consider the size layout of your kitchen, food storage, arrangements, food handling, processing, and production. To help consumers make safe and informed choices, food business operators may voluntarily provide information about the unintentional presence of allergens. This can be done by using voluntary labeling such as may contain or not suitable for to communicate the risk of the unintentional presence of an allergen. For example, milk, egg, peanuts, or almonds in a food product due to the allergen entering the product through cross-contamination. These statements should only be used after a meaningful risk assessment has been performed and there is considered to be a real risk to the consumers with food allergies and intolerances and should not be used as a substitute for good hygiene and safety practices. The use of precautionary allergen labeling when there is not a real risk could be considered to be misleading food information. If after carrying out a risk assessment, it is not possible to guarantee there will be no allergen cross-contamination, you may wish to display a notice such as, whilst a dish may not contain a specific allergen due to the wide range of ingredients used in our kitchen, foods may be at risk of cross-contamination by X ingredients. Please ask staff for further information. Such a notice should be displayed at each place the consumer can place their order. You are reminded that this use of a precautionary statement does not replace the duty to inform customers about the presence of the 14 allergens required to be declared by law. Don't cater for a customer with a food allergy or intolerance if you can't do so safely. Kitchen procedures, ingredient storage. Allergens can be easily transferred from one food to another, meaning allergen-free foods can become contaminated and are no longer allergen-free. This poses a risk to a customer with a food allergy being served food and suffering an allergic reaction. It is important to make sure all foods and decanted foods are clearly labeled, listing the ingredients, including the allergens. Keep food fully covered, resealed or placed into dedicated sealed containers if needed, and any food spillages in storage areas or equipment are cleaned up immediately. Store allergen-free items separately and preferably at higher level than those containing an allergic ingredient. Take care when handling airborne allergens. Ensure food of fine or powdered allergens, for example, bags of flour containing wheat or gluten, is handled and stored carefully to avoid cross-contamination and transfer of dust from one food to another. To reduce cross-contamination from dust, it is better to place the whole bag into a container rather than pour its contents into a container. Kitchen Procedures Food Preparation If you agree to produce a meal for a customer with a food allergy, you have to make sure that the meal is free from the allergenic ingredient and ensure that the food is not contaminated with the allergen in question. Follow your food allergen management procedures to ensure this doesn't happen when food is prepared. If you need to substitute an ingredient for any reason, ensure allergen information is communicated to the consumer. Check to make sure that any ingredients used to prepare a dish do not contain the allergen the customer is allergic to. If the label of any of the ingredients you are using to prepare that dish says they may contain certain food allergens, let the customer know and ask them if they still wish to order. Where practical, plan ahead and prepare food for customers with a food allergy at the beginning of service or at a separate time after a proper clean down of all cooking equipment, preparation surfaces and utensils. When you have been asked to prepare a dish that does not contain a certain ingredient, make sure work surfaces and equipment have been thoroughly cleaned first. Be aware some equipment is inherently difficult to clean properly, for example, woks, griddles, tandoors, microwaves, pizza ovens, 
vacuum packers, blenders, and mixers. Make sure staff wash their hands thoroughly before preparing the dish. If you make a mistake when preparing a dish for a customer with a food allergy, do not just remove the ingredient containing the allergen from the dish and still serve the food. Start from scratch with fresh ingredients, a clean plate, and clean utensils. Remember, unlike bacteria, allergens are always present in the food and cannot be removed or destroyed by cooking. Front of house procedures. The Tell Us If You Have an Allergen poster that you see on screen was designed by Caerphilly County Borough Council as a communication tool to assist customers to inform a food business about their allergy or intolerance. The posters are multilingual and they are available in nine languages English, Welsh, Punjabi, Urdu, Turkish, Bengali, Mandarin, Cantonese, and Kurdish. The information on how to download these is available on Caerphilly County Borough Council website. That's www.caerphilly.gov.uk slash trading standards. This is not a legal notice, but we would encourage businesses to consider displaying it prominently front of house where it can be easily seen. Whilst there is a responsibility on the customer to inform you of any food allergy or intolerance, you are encouraged when taking orders over the telephone or when seating guests to ask every customer if they or any of their party who will be eating the food has any allergies or intolerances that you need to be aware of. Be mindful that for some, this is not an easy thing to discuss in public, particularly in front of peers and may need sensitive handling. Staff must know where they can access up-to-date allergen information at all times. It would assist if you had a dedicated location where this information is kept. You could use up-to-date ingredient labels, recipes, an allergen chart, etc., as discussed earlier, or you could consider providing staff with a checklist or guidance that they can refer to whilst taking orders that highlights which dishes contain what type of allergenic ingredients. Some of you will have this information on electronic devices. However you choose to do it, staff must have access to accurate written allergen information and not be required to memorize it. Train staff to always double-check allergen information. Once a customer notifies your business about their food allergy or intolerance, don't leave anything to chance. Show them that you take this matter seriously from the outset. Knowing a customer's dietary needs when booking will help you identify dishes in advance that may not be suitable for the customer to eat, as well as help you direct the customer to dishes that are safe for them. It will also assist you with planning in the kitchen. Customers who have a positive experience are more likely to become loyal to your business. Ensure your staff know how to deal with specific customer needs. For example, staff may need to discuss which allergens the customer needs to avoid and provide information on the unintentional presence of allergens due to cross-contamination or the use of ingredients that carry may contain warnings. It is very important that any customer's allergies or intolerances are accurately recorded when the order is placed and staff alert the kitchen that the food they are about to prepare is for someone with a food allergy or intolerance. Consider and review how these orders are highlighted. For example, is it in writing on the order? Is it flagged on cash register software? And is the chef told directly? Communication between front and back of house is key. Staff must know how orders are handled and communicated to staff that select, prepare and serve the customer's food. This is particularly important where there are any specific allergen requirements. For example, the customer orders a standard dish without a specific allergenic ingredient. Make sure there is a process in place to ensure the safe preparation of every allergen-free meal and its delivery to the correct customer. Investigate any allergen complaints or incidents as a matter of urgency. Find out what went wrong. Assess if there is a continuing risk and take the appropriate action to address that risk. You may wish to seek advice from environmental health or trading standards departments. Review, update your allergen risk assessment, your policies and procedures, Retrain staff in allergen management as appropriate and record your findings. Train all staff on induction regardless of whether they have previous training or experience working in the food and drink sector. Focus on your business's allergen management procedures. All staff should know what to do when a customer asks about the presence of allergens in your dishes and drinks. They will need to know how to deal with the request or if and when they should involve another member of staff who has been designated responsible to deal with allergens, for example, a manager or the chef. 
Staff should know what information must legally be provided to a customer who inquires about the 14 allergens required to be declared by law. They should also know what to do if the customer has an allergy intolerance to an ingredient that is not one of the 14. Staff must know where they can find and access up-to-date allergen information, for example, food labels, recipe sheets, an allergen chart, or allergen information files. If you change your menu, recipes, or use a new supplier, make sure all your allergen ingredient information, including online, is updated, and tell staff about the changes. The same applies if your supplier sends a different product to the one you ordered. Staff must know how food should be handled and prepared to control the intentional and unintentional introduction of allergens. They should also know the importance of personal hygiene and what personal protective clothing they are required to wear. Ensure staff are confident in serving allergen-free meals and they understand the importance of delivering allergen-free meals to the right customer. Staff must be alerted to the consequences of providing incorrect information and getting it wrong. All staff should be familiar with your emergency procedures and staff trained in first aid should make a point of learning what to do if somebody suffers from anaphylaxis. Monitor staff, make sure you are confident that they know and understand your processes and procedures and make sure they are periodically reviewed. Staff should have regular refresher training. Provide an update or additional refresher training if there is a change in the law or your procedures. You become aware of any complaints and near miss occurs. Keep records of your staff training, including any course certificates. Record any updates to staff, discussions on allergens, or staff training on allergens in your weekly diary. If you use Safer Food Better Business, include this in the extra check section. Don't forget, the Food Standards Agency offers free online allergy training and downloadable resources which you may find useful. Non-prepacked food is any food presented to the final consumer that does not fall within the definition of prepacked food. Non-prepacked foods include food sold loose, meals served in a restaurant and sold in a takeaway, food packaged which is packaged at the same place at the consumer's request, such as salad prepared in front of the consumer, businesses that supply non-prepacked food, for example restaurants, takeaways, caterers, must supply customers on request with information about the presence of the 14 allergens listed in law. Allergen information can be provided in a variety of ways for non-prepacked food. In writing, for example, on menus, chalkboards, a notice or ticket by simply listing the allergens present in the food. Alternatively, a single allergen notice specifying the allergens present in every dish is allowed, provided customers can see it before ordering. If customers place their order at a single point, for example by queuing at the counter, the information only needs to be visible from that point. However, if customers can order from multiple points, from the bar, from their table, etc., then the information should be presented at each point, on the menu for example. The most reliable way of providing allergen information is in writing. This should be considered best practice. Allergen information can be given verbally for non-prepacked food. If you choose this method, you must clearly signpost customers by displaying a notice where they can get the information. This is a legal requirement. Signpost instruction notices should be cited so they are visible to customers where they make their order, for example at a till point, and again if they place their order from multiple locations, the signposting should be displayed at each one. A specimen notice template which says food allergies and intolerances, please speak to a member of staff if you require information about our ingredients, is available to download from the Food Standards Agency website. Remember, pre-packed for direct sale products require the name of the food and the full ingredients list with the allergens emphasized within the list to be directly provided on the package or on a label attached to the package. Takeaway food and delivery. If taking food orders or using a website to advertise and or take orders, you must be able to let your customers know what allergens are in the food you serve before the order is placed and at the point of delivery to the customer. You could put a clear and easy to see statement on your website, printed menus and flyers to tell customers where they can obtain allergen information. Put a notice on your website's or third party website, flyers and menus advising customers where they can get allergen information before they place their orders. You are also advised to include an allergen precautionary statement on your menu. 
but only where you have assessed there to be a real risk of allergen cross-contamination. It is important to ensure this information is regularly checked and kept up to date. You must ensure takeaway orders for customers with food allergies can be clearly identified. Written food allergen information can be provided in a few ways. For example, you can label each food container with a sticker, which clearly identifies the food and its allergenic ingredients. For example, chicken satay contains wheat, soy, fish, peanut. There are lots of examples of allergen labels or stickers on the internet. If you choose to handwrite allergen information on your food, it must be legible and you should not use abbreviations that could be confused. Ensure that an allergen-free meal does not get confused with a similar meal containing that allergen. You should label the meal without delay. Written allergen information can be presented to the customer by the person delivering the food. If you provide allergen information on your menu, it would be good practice to supply one with the order. If your customers can order their takeaway via a third-party online ordering site that you contract with, for example, Just Eat or Deliveroo, familiarize yourself with their allergen standards, policies and procedures. Can you comply with them? Check allergen signposting is prominent and directs customers to your business for information. Add any specific risk assessments, precautionary allergen statements, tailored information, or links to your business website where appropriate, and regularly check and update as necessary. Staff must know how to deal with allergen requests and how to process the different types of orders your business receives. These may be internet orders or orders taken over the telephone. They need to be clear on the line of communication between front and back of house and how to highlight allergen orders to the kitchen and pass on customer queries to someone in the business who can help and provide them with allergen information. Don't forget to train in-house delivery drivers on allergens. If they provide allergen information to customers, they need to access accurate allergen information on each of the dishes. To avoid any miscommunication, it is important that drivers receive specific instruction and information direct from the kitchen. All food must be delivered to consumers in a way that ensures that it does not become unsafe or unfit to eat. When necessary, hot or chilled food must be kept in an insulated bag. If food needs to be chilled, make sure ice packs are put in the bags with the food. Food businesses should identify and remove possible cross-contamination risks in the delivery process. This can be done through packaging meals securely and storing allergen-free meals separately in transit to avoid cross-contamination through spillages. You could consider having a dedicated allergen-free bag for those orders. Delivery personnel should be instructed to double-check that the customer has received the correct order. If your business offers an event catering, buffet or platter service, you will need a system in place to accurately record, in writing, any food allergies or intolerances you are notified of. Staff processing the orders must be aware of any special dietary, allergen, intolerance requirements. If there are any special serving or setup instructions, make sure the staff know about them in advance of the event and check on the day that they have been carried out. Where a customer specifically orders allergen-free food, consider providing this on a separate, lidded plate or platter which is clearly labelled Ensure that this is provided to the correct customer. Allergen information must be provided for each food item separately. You should not provide it for the buffet as a whole. You can provide this information by labeling the allergens contained in individual dishes or by displaying a sign directing customers to ask staff for allergen information. This information must be visible, clearly legible and easily accessible to the customer. If you use labels, signs, allergy flags, they must remain with the food throughout the service when customers are serving themselves. To help prevent cross-contamination, consider how you lay out the food, provide separate, sufficient and easily distinguishable serving utensils. The law says food descriptions must not be false or misleading. This is important because this is the information customers rely on when making choices about food that is safe for them to eat. There are a number of ways your business can inform customers about the presence of allergens, some examples which you may wish to consider. If you offer table service, you could place a flyer and or sticker on tables to remind customers to inform the staff of their allergy. You could include an allergen statement in your menu to inform customers that you take allergen safety seriously. And if they have an allergy, they should let you know and can request advice from a member of staff. If a dish contains an allergen, 
why not communicate it in the name and description of the food? For example, walnut and carrot salad, sesame oil dressing. You can use icons or symbols or flags in your menu to highlight free-from allergens. For example, dairy-free, gluten-free, as well as suitable for vegetarians or vegans. Consider introducing a food allergy and information file, which customers who may have a food hypersensitivity are encouraged to look through with a manager before ordering. You could insert your food allergen chart in the front of your menu. You could also post your allergen charts online. This will give customers the opportunity to check your menu beforehand. Seeing that you have detailed allergen information could be hugely reassuring and a good selling point for them. If possible, consider letting customers speak directly to the responsible person, for example, the chef or manager. Even if staff feel confident in their knowledge of allergens, they should not just recite them off the top of their head. They should check every time they're asked for advice, as they could easily make a mistake or the recipe may have changed and the information may have been updated since they last checked. Implement a no-guessing policy. If there is any doubt as to whether a dish is free from an allergenic ingredient, admit it and ensure the customer you will check and you will find out. Never guess. What can happen when things go wrong? By failing to comply with allergen information requirements, you run the risk of making a customer seriously ill or even worse, causing a fatality. You could also face the prospect of financial and reputational damage to your food business. Local authority trading standards and environmental health departments enforce allergen information regulations. If you fail to act on their advice, an improvement notice may be issued. If you do not meet the requirements of the notice, enforcement action may be taken. When things go wrong, depending on the circumstances, businesses, food business operators and employees may also face being investigated and prosecuted by the local authority. You may also be investigated by the police. If found guilty, you could face unlimited fines, compensation claims and depending on the severity and facts of the case, even a prison sentence. In 2018, Caerphilly County Borough Council investigated a case where allergen processes in a factory went wrong. The council's trading standard service received a complaint from one of the council's employees. The complainant, who had been diagnosed as allergic to nuts and eggs as a child, purchased a tzatziki dip from a supermarket in Caerphilly, which she had done many times before. She checked the ingredients listed on the food label, as she always did and it did not declare the presence of nuts or eggs. Shortly after eating a small amount of the dip, whilst alone at home, she began to exhibit signs of anaphylaxis, with the closing of her airways, swelling of her face and neck, and she was sick. She injected herself with her adrenaline auto-injector and very frightened rang her mother for help. Thankfully, she recovered. A trading standards officer went to the supermarket and purchased the last remaining tzatziki dip from the same batch. Both dips were submitted to the public analyst and he reported that both samples contained egg. In Merthyr Tidfil Crown Court, the managing director of the manufacturer admitted that a dip which contained egg had been produced on the line before the tzatziki dip. Egg from that product was the source of cross-contamination. In October 2019, the company pleaded guilty to three food safety charges. The district judge said it was a very serious case, and in deciding the fine, he took into account the potential harm, the culpability, and the size of the company. The company was fined £93,000, and the council were awarded nearly £15,000 in costs. On the 1st of January 2017, 15-year-old Megan Lee from Lancashire passed away as a result of suffering an allergic reaction to a takeaway meal. In response to this tragedy, Lancashire Trading Standard Service developed Megan's Story. This video features Megan's parents, Adam and Gemma Lee, and contains photos and videos of Megan as she grew up. It highlights the consequence of a food business not taking allergens seriously. They hope in sharing their experience, it will raise awareness of allergies and turn their tragic situation into something positive. Megan, when she was growing up, we always described her as our princess. She used to love dressing up and creative play. 
set, set in scenes with the, with the teddy bears. I remember she had a little tea set. She used to make us you know, pretend cups of tea and, and, and bring them over to us. That was just her nature. She was, she was kind, thoughtful. If she saw anybody on their own, she would make the effort to go over and, and talk to them, make friends. She absolutely loved um, musical theatre and drama. She's so timid, so quiet, and then you put her on the stage and it was like, wow, oh, is, that, is that our Megan? She did her first solo, didn't she? And it was amazing. And it was amazing to see everybody, you know, be affected by that and the, the cheers and the claps that came after. It was so good, wasn't it? Yeah. She loved nothing more than spending time with her little brother. They used to lie on the settee, cuddling, watching telly. One thing that will always stick is the little videos that they used to make. Megan had an allergic reaction to what we know now as nuts when she was nine. She'd... Um, Started with puffy eyes, a little bit of an itch, um, wheezing, and we went to see the GP. GP prescribed at that time um, Pyroton, and then we were sent for, for a town further test to see what things she were actually allergic to. It did confirm that she was allergic to nuts. She'd never eaten or come into contact with nuts since that day until the time she had the severe reaction. It was just after Christmas. Megan had arranged to go out with a friend for the day. Gemma had dropped me off at the pub where I was having a few drinks with friends. I was there for about an hour. Um, and all of a sudden my, my dad came charging through the door saying, Adam, you need to come with me. Um, at first it didn't register. Um, he repeated himself, he said, you need to come with me now. Megan's not breathing. Um, and after that, the, the journey home was, was, was just a blur. Um, I got onto our road. Um, all I could see was flashing lights, ambulances. As soon as I got through the door, I just ran straight upstairs to Megan. She used to revise on mind maps, didn't she? So mm -hmm. she'd have things let out all over, little um, like cards with things on for her to remember. So was that, that was all the summer before for her mock exams. And then over Christmas, it was going to be a GCSEs when she goes back. And she spent all Christmas, didn't she, revising, and we would be constantly like, just, just come out for like an hour. Come and spend a bit of time with us for, for an hour. And it felt awful that she'd done all that and then couldn't... And then didn't get a chance to do her exams. used to sit down at the table, especially on a Sunday as a family. We've, we've, we've tried to do that since we've lost Megan, and that was probably one of the hardest things. All the friends keep in touch with me, um, and I did see them all when they did the... when they got the GCSE results, and every single one of them did amazing. And for them to go through all that they went through with losing somebody so young and um, affecting them like the way it did for them to just go and smash it and they did it because they knew that that's what Megan would want and uh, Megan would be extremely proud of them. We can't change our story as much as we would love to. I mean every day we wake up and hope it were night but, but it isn't. But what we can do is help others um, 
and to stop this story happening again in somebody else's family. If businesses aren't 100% sure about the ingredients in their products, then I would say you must not supply that to the customers. Um, it's better to be safe than sorry. Those that have allergies, they, they usually sort of like brought up with it, so it becomes a little bit of a norm to them. So they would ultimately check anyway, but it's about what information is given to them. They can ask the questions, but they need to know that who's supplying the answers are coming from somebody that's confident and they know exactly what's in there. That should be a standard. We live every day now thinking about what if, and we know losing Megan shouldn't have happened. And we know that if precautions was taken, it wouldn't have happened. And we know, we know it could have been avoided. These are the implications of getting it wrong. Um, not having the right attitude towards our allergens. We're living proof now of somebody or a business getting it wrong. We're living with the fact that we've lost Megan, but the, the people that have been a little bit careless are living with the fact that they've caused that. The powerful, real-life experiences shared during this presentation highlights the need for individuals and businesses to take allergies seriously. The tragic deaths of Megan, Owen, Natasha and other victims that have died in such circumstances were totally avoidable. In the words of the coroner in the inquest of Megan's death, not only do their families have to live with their indescribable loss, but those who caused it must live with the guilt of what they have done and the suffering they have caused. The courts have shown that they are taking such cases very seriously and that significant criminal penalties can and do follow where businesses fail to comply with the law. It is essential that people who prepare food and provide food information in your business understand the law and the potential devastating consequences of getting it wrong. Please be a responsible business. Create a positive food safety culture which strives to provide safe food. Ensure allergen management procedures are in place. When customers place orders, make it your business practice to ask them if they have an allergy or intolerance. Check and know what allergens are in your dishes so you can confidently inform your customers. Consider cross-contamination risks. Do not cater for someone with an allergy or intolerance if you are unable to do so safely. Train all staff. Make sure back and front of house communication is clear. Provide customers with clear, accurate information so they can make an informed decision. Never guess. Be safe, not sorry. Be allergy aware. Further business advice and resources are available online at www.food.gov.uk. Following this training, please don't hesitate to contact the local authority food law enforcement service in the area that your business is registered in. If you require further tailored business advice to assist you in developing an effective allergen control system, have any questions or need further guidance on allergen management, or you wish to report a problem. 
The Greater Gwent Food Group wishes to thank you for joining us. We do hope you found this training useful. We would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to Chloe Fitzpatrick and family and Gemma and Adam Lee for sharing their experiences with us. Also to Lancashire County Council Training Standards and Hindburn Borough Council Environmental Health for the production of the resources used in this presentation. Sincere thanks also to Rabble Post Production, the translators and voice artists for their professionalism in producing this resource. We would also like to express our appreciation to the Food Standards Agency and Trading Standards Wales for all their help and support.